Hi, YouTube. Welcome back to a final episode on Renaissance Child Prodigies, Sophonies by Anguissala. Today's focus is on aspects of Anguissala's career that contributed to her legacy as a court painter. Her opportunities were made possible through nurturing parents Bianca and Ambicare. The objective is to show how Anguissala overcame obstacles typical to Renaissance female artists and achieved fame. Anguissala left a legacy in the portraiture genre in a unique animation of subjects with emotion and movement, which portraiture lacked until she came along. Royal Portraiture, Revival of Ancient Greco-Roman Ideals Before Madrid, Anguissala completed royal portraits as portrait of Marquez Massimiliano Stampa, 1557. Anguissala uses informal setting and props that signify the child's newly inherited aristocratic title, small dog, black attire, gloves, sword, a column for his humanism. The theme is duty, set against the revival of Greco-Roman classicism. Royal medieval portraiture bore only a token resemblance to the subject. Anguissalus emphasized a good likeness to the subject. In 1558, Anguissala painted Duke of Alba, Fernando Alvarez de Toledo. In the works, Anguissala uses richer, darker colors, sharper clarity of form and line. Anguissala's skill to express various textiles and textures expands. She brands her royal style by painting female attire with fur, jewels, and gold, for instance. Elizabeth of Valois, teen queen. At Habsburg court, Anguissala's royal duties included attending and teaching out to Elizabeth of Valois and her daughters by Philip II, Isabella Clara Eugenia, and Catalina Micaela for 14 years. The young queen died at 23. Anguissala may have continued similar duties with Philip's fourth wife, Anne of Austria, but she left Madrid with sadness five years later. Queen Juana of Austria. Anguissala's relationships included other royals and artists. She shared the limelight with Spanish artist Alonso Sanchez Cuello. Juana of Austria was regent of Spain for her brother Philip II and married to Juan Manuel of Portugal until his death, 1554. Juana's convent, Las Descalzas Reales, Nuns of Port Clare, or Nuestra Señora de la Consolación for Women, 1557, featured many artworks. Juana's convent attracted aristocratic, unwed women. She was an important figure for females. The Loves of Sophonies by Anguissala After the death of Anguissala's parents and Elizabeth of Valois in 1568, Philip II arranged her marriage to Sicilian nobleman Fabrizio Moncada Pignatelli with a dowry of 12,000 scudi. The couple lived in Madrid and Sicily, 1573 to 1579, when Pignatelli died. Anguissala's pension of 100 ducats enabled her to support her siblings and continue as a painter and tutor. Returning to Cremona in 1581, Anguissala fell for a handsome younger man, a ship's captain, Orazio Romelino, and married him in 1584, to the disappointment of her brother, Asdrubale. Romelino's immense wealth permitted Anguissala to freelance her. Her royal style became trendy in Genoa among artists and students. The Building of New Spain in 1559, Philip II began an expedition with Miguel Lopez de Legazpi to the Spice Islands. Magellan began this campaign under Hernan Cortes, but was killed in the Philippines, 1521, the period of the conquest of the Aztec Empire. School of Salamanca, Francisco de Vitoria, 1483 to 1546, Francisco Suarez, 1548 to 1617, Domingo de Soto, 1494 to 1560, Martin de Azpilcueta, 1491 to 1586, School of Salamanca, Madrid, and 
Rugo Grotius, 1583 to 1645, opposed slavery, argued for just ethical war to prevent evil, and for international law. Their theories justified a respect for human dignity and rights of all peoples. The Conquest of Manila, Manila, 1570. Besides Philip II and Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, Francisco de Toledo Vire, 1515 to 1582, was also act active in the campaign. In 1570, Philip II conquered the kim Kingdom of Manila, Philippines, Spice Islands, or Maluku Islands, as part of New Spain. Trade began between the Philippines and and Spain. Colonization and slavery began in 1570. In the Spanish conquest of Portugal. In 1583, Philip II conquered the Azores, Portugal, with Alvaro de Bazan, first Marquez of Santa Cruz. Portugal joined military forces with Spain. Under Salamanca School's international law, that war was partly carried out by morally unjust principles. Royal Portraiture, Overtures of Italian Renaissance Humanism. The stunning Infanta Isabella Clara Eugenia and Infanta Caterina Michaela, 1570, oil on canvas, Buckingham Palace, appears after the death of Elizabeth of Valois during the conquest of Mandela. Color is sensitive to passion and humanism and follows Lomazzo's instruction to divine context through color. And Grisola defines space between Isabella Clara Eugenia and Catalina Michaela with a dog on top of a deep red textile, which denotes the queen's death. Lush, intense velvet signifies the aristocratic identity of the surviving daughters, as do hair ornaments and jewels. Infanta Isabella Clara Eugenia and Infanta Caterina Michaela, 1570. Much of the painting's context relates to Ficino's Platonic Theology, 1474. The boat signifies the queen's soul, an in infinite divine space. This figural art arrangement, this figural arrangement, refers to Ficino's chain of being and Platonic Theology, Chapter 3, Part 2. Ficino relates to the soul and its binding of upper hierarchies, such as the bird, with lower ones, the dog and humans. The queen resides in heaven. Her soul's centrality in the chain of humanity denotes dignity and immortality. Ficino does not view humans on diverse levels. The concept of slavery is not part of this equation in the chain of being. The metaphysical experience of a soul when in contact with matter causes a decline in the human condition. Final Years, The Legacy of Sophonies by Anguissala Orazio and Sophonisba resided in Genoa until 1620, when Anguissola was 88. She spent her final years in Palermo, Sicily. Anguissola completed over 50 masterpieces, including her final self-portrait, 1610. Anguissola's legacy not only includes a revamping of her mannerist style for a Baroque royal one and paved it also paved the way for younger artists to follow. Hope you've enjoyed this series on Sophonisba and Whistler. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.